This is another classic piece of early generative art. It was created by Georg Nees sometime in the 1960s. And what you can see are a bunch of boxes that starting from the top are perfectly aligned in this grid. But with every row that we go down, it becomes wilder and wilder and the boxes are rotated more and more. And this brick wall, which it is towards the top, really starts to dissolve as we approach the bottom of the canvas. And a couple of years later, um, around comes a guy called Bill Komeich, who creates this picture here, which is called Boxes. And this is pretty similar. I mean, you have this same idea of boxes that are either perfectly in place or that are rotated. But here, the rotations are more intense towards the center of the canvas. And this kind of gives us this illusion of the wall being punched through. It's like a wall of boxes and somebody's just plowing through that from behind. And I think this also looks pretty cool. So let's hop over to the editor and get coding. Okay, I am now in the editor and I have created a new script called gravel.py. It's called gravel because Georg Nees named his sketch or his, his picture, his artwork, he called it Schotter, which is German for well, gravel. So yeah, let's code this first and then we'll move on to Bill Kolmeich's um, boxes. So within the gravel script, I've now set up everything as it was within the other script. So we have the turtle, we have our little set theme function in our theme script, and then we have the random module. And here I'm making use of this function that we created. And down here we have our tracer, which then switches back to true because set theme set it to false. And then we have this exit on click. And if I run this, we have our empty canvas and here I can close it. Okay, so let's get started. And we can really use some of the stuff that we saw in the earlier video where we can have this double loop. So for every Y, here we are starting on the top and then moving to the bottom. And well, so remember how we were able to set within the set theme function, the canvas size, the height and the width. So because we want this to be, you know, taller than wide, we'll say canvas width is only equal to 600 and we'll leave the height at 1000. And now we say for every Y in, well, we'll start at 400 and we'll go to negative 400. So we'll leave a little bit of margin. And then because we, we could go from 500 to minus 500, which adds up to 1000. But here we are only going from 400 to minus 400. And then we go down by a certain size, which we'll specify up here. So I'm just gonna set size to 50 for now. We can play around. That is just really the size of the squares, the size of the boxes. So for every Y in, in, in this series of steps, then we'll go through the second loop for every X in range and now 600. So I'm gonna leave a little margin again. So I'm gonna make this a margin of 50, then we'll start at negative 250. We'll go to positive 250 also in uh, the step size. And here I'm very inconsistent with when I make spaces and then I don't, but anyway, here they are. So that's gonna be our loop. So what is it that we'll do? Well, we have to move to the location and then we have to draw uh, well, we have to rotate, that's important. We have to do the rotation and only then are we gonna draw our square. Okay, well, how do we move to the location? That's pretty simple. We lift up the pen because we don't want the turtle to draw its path to that location. So pen is lifted up and then we go to X and Y and then we put down our pen. And then we can do the rotation. And here we'll just rotate this by some random angle. I'm just going to call this random and then uniform. So we'll be drawing from the uniform distribution. And this is something you will have seen in another video as well, minus noise and plus noise. So we need a noise variable. I'm going to introduce that right up here. Noise is equal to 0.0, .0 for now. In the top row, there is no noise. Everything is perfectly in order. And yeah, how do we rotate? Well, we'll just take the turn right function and then we rotate by whatever angle. And since this can be negative, there's also left rotations contained with that. So you could also change that to left and that shouldn't change anything in the result. And then we have to draw our square. So we'll say for I in range four, I mean, I could use the function that we had created in the earlier video when we were doing the nested squares, but here 
well, since we don't really have to move the squares around because we are already at that location, there's not really the need to do that. So we'll just say forward by size, um, whatever the size is, and then, you know, turn by 90 degrees, do that four times, that's our square. And well, let's see what happens. There's still something missing here, but for now, let's, let's just run this. And there we go. So we have this up here and then another row down there. So that is not working the way it should. Now, what could the problem be? So 400 and minus 400 minus size and up. We're going there. We're putting our pin down. We are rotating. Um, what is the problem? The problem appears to be up here. It doesn't say range in here. We do this. Now it's fixed. And now we can really see how everything fits together. We have our screen. We have our grid on that screen, our grid of perfectly aligned squares. So let's add some noise to this right now. It's zero and you know we're not really rotating anything. So after we have drawn the square, when we are ready to go into, well, this is now the next position in the same row. So let's go out of this inner loop and add some noise when we enter the next row. So here we'll say noise plus equal, just make this three for now. And there we go. Now the boxes have started to rotate. But it feels like the rotations are too symmetrical. So something is wrong with the random uniform thing. And to verify this, I'm just going to print that noise. So the noise is actually increasing. That's perfectly fine. But let's, oh, that was not supposed to happen. Just jump back up here um, into, the, <laughs> into the wrong script. So let's just print the angle. Let's see what happens. Okay, that's positive and negative numbers. Then why is it so weird? Why is it not pretty? What could the problem be? Yeah, right. <laughs> we are not rotating back. So um, when we are rotating, uh, let's run this. Um, we are just adding on top of that. So here you can you can see this quite nicely here. We are rotating and then more and more and more. Of course, we can by accident rotate back in the other direction. But once it's compounded, it's really adding up and the rotations, they don't look pretty. So let's rotate back. Once we've drawn the square, we'll say rotate back and then we'll just say left that particular angle. And when we do that, that is when we get this impression of everything at first being in order and then everything starts to fall apart. So let's increase that noise a little, maybe four. And there we go. And now we are getting really close to the original image by Georg Nies. Now we might want to play around with the thickness of the lines. So let's make this two and run again. And there we go. I think this is this is pretty much it. This is what the original image looked like. Of course, we could introduce other things such as, you know, there being a couple of rows up here where everything is fine and the noise really only starting after three or four rows. But here, I don't really care. I'm perfectly satisfied with this. This is close enough to the original painting as I want to get. So let's move over to the second image. And to do that, I'm now gonna create a new script. So this script is called boxes.py. And here I can now, well, I can copy a lot of what we had from here. I can copy this over. But the canvas here, well, now we want to make it really wide. So I'm going to set this to 1800. This might be a different value on your computer screen. So you might have to play around with this a little bit. On my screen, this will look pretty good, I think. And then, well, I'm going to take this. Put this over here and let's give it a go. There we go. This is our screen. It fills almost my entire monitor here, but that's what we need. We want to have a big canvas here. Um, well, then let's get started. We'll define another size here. I'm going to go for 30. We might have to change this later on, but I want the boxes to be a bit smaller because we're going to be drawing a lot of them. And then I can copy paste this idea of the loop. So this thing here. We can also copy paste this and the rotation. In fact, you know what? I'm just gonna copy paste the whole thing. So there we go. And now we gotta adjust these values. So why um, 
can stay the same because we did not alter the height. But here, the width, that's what we changed. So we got to change this as well. So 1800, that's 900 either way. So let's start at, you know, maybe 800, negative 800 and go all the way to 800. Let's see whether, you know, that looks any good. So for now, we'll ignore this. You know what? I'll just have to comment out this line here and this one right there. Do this. And it crashes because noise is not defined yet. Oh, not supposed to happen. Noise is equal to 0, 0. Let's run this. And there we go. Here's our grid. And now the challenge is to introduce the noise in the center. So not just arbitrarily increasing it as we progress down from the top to the bottom of the canvas, but it's really only in the center. So it the noise appears and then so, sort of disappears as we are covering that 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 canvas with, with squares. Okay, how do we do that? Well, um, we got to go back to high school. High school? No, not not high school. It's a lot earlier. Middle school, maybe uh, geometry, and we have to compute distances because we want to compute the distance um, from the center, right? So we'll say, um, what is the distance from the center of our canvas well the origin is located right at the center so that's zero zero and to compute a distance we have to have the ability to compute square root so i'm going to import maths here and then say math dot square root and well it's going to be the x location minus the x location of the origin which is zero so i'm just going to have x multiplied with x itself so we are because we've got a squared so we'll just say x squared and then we're doing the same thing with y so we have y squared that's that's our that's going to be our distance so the square root of that and then we'll say that the noise that is by how much we are rotating it it has to be proportional um, to that distance now if i'm going to set noise equal to distance the result um you know, it's just turned all over because if we're just a couple of pixels away from the center, this is already enough to just blow everything up. So we might have to now play around with this a little and, and, and to scale it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce another variable up here, which I'll call the maximum distance. That is the the, 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 the most that you can be away from, um, from the center here. Now that is going to be math square root. Now, in terms of our y location this can at most be 400 and with the x location it's going to be 800 so here we'll say it's 800 squared plus 400 squared now our noise well we can sort of say well how far are we away from the max distance so max distance minus our distance here now let's see whether that you know makes things a little bit better Let's run this again and it's still a complete mess but you can sort of see that towards the edges here there's a little bit of order here so maybe just maybe all we have to do now is we have to divide this so i'm just going to reduce the amount of noise i'm just going to 10 ish i'm going to go with 10 for now so let's run this um what's happening yeah there we go and there we go now this is getting a lot better and we can see that now we really have this nice box effect, except up here, there's also a little bit of noise in the corners. And of course, the center, we, we have this problem that we're not drawing on a square. So we gotta take care of that as well. But right now we are, we are on the right track, okay? So let's go for maybe 15 to make it a bit more condensed in the center. So I think this is looking good. Now, what do we do? Well, we have to sort of regulate the amount of noise that we have and cut it off at some point. And the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'll just say um, that noise is equal to noise only if noise is larger than some arbitrary value, which for now I'm just also going to set to 15. And if that is not the case, if noise is not greater than that, I'm just going to set it to zero. So that's going to take care of this problem in the edges, which were slightly rotated ever so slightly so let me just briefly um, go back I'm just gonna make this a comment and now you can see how there's some rotation going on here but if I'm gonna make this just a regular line of code you can see how this is gone and we are getting closer and closer to the to, to our final result here and now the only problem that's really left is that we're moving away from the edges here and 
The problem now is this part up here because we want this to be a perfectly aligned set of squares up here and down here as well. And the mess is really supposed to be only in the center. Okay, now how do we do that? Let's get back out of here. Now what we'll do is we'll sort of change the way that we compute the distance. And we're gonna scale that distance based on the proportion of the width to the height, so the ratio of width to height. Now that ratio um, is 800 to 400, or really just two. So let's just add in this two to the power of two, and we're gonna multiply that with y to the power of two. Now, and if we do that, then we get the desired result of all of the mess really only being in the center. And we could change this a little bit, so we could say, and then divide the whole thing by two maybe. Let's see what that looks like. So that's that gives us a different effect. It's more of a circle and less of an ellipse in the center. And I think it's maybe a bit better, but there's still this problem of this going up here. I mean, this is not a problem. This is art. If, if you like it, that's what we'll draw. But for now, I'm just maybe gonna go with three here. And oh, this is actually making it worse. So I'm gonna go with 1.5. And yeah, I think this is this is actually looking looking pretty good. And yeah, this is I think about as close as I'll get to the original image. I might play around with these values in um, advance to this video. I, I I think I did not have this in there, and I had a different. I played around with seven hundred here, so I had a bit of a wider margin. And then this was not this nice fraction. Oop, seven hundred of um, 800 over 400, but it was really 700 over four. So this is now seven over four. And if I ran that, I got this picture, which is also really nice and is basically what you saw in the beginning of the video. Anyway, I think we have implemented these two cool pieces of art in Python, and you've learned a lot about rotations, and now you can really do anything you want. You could have rotations towards the corners instead of in the center. So that would be something that's perfectly ordered in the middle and then it just sort of fans out. That is something that you could do. You could, might also say, well, I like this rotation idea of, of nice, which is what we had before. That was the, the gravel image, but I don't want it to um, fall apart towards the bottom, but at the top or to one of the sides. There's, you know, you can really do anything here. And um, yeah, I hope you have a lot of fun with this and see you in the next video.